Okay, cool. So hello world. Thank you everyone for joining me in this talk titled Running Machine Learning Algorithms with Machine Learning Tools available in Apache Ecosystem. So in this talk we will learn more about what are the tools available in Apache Ecosystem to run the machine learning algorithm with efficient distributed manner uh, with lesser data transmission over the whole machine learning lifecycle. So, the researchers and data scientists are coming with new algorithms, uh, new machine learning algorithms with improvements and enhancement every single day. So we can easily see various research papers uh, coming up and uh, the implementation of those new algorithms are very frequent in various deep learning and machine learning uh, libraries. So we got the performance uh, better performance in our uh, prototype version but most of them are not in production right now so what could be the reason so one of the reason could be because the whole machine learning life cycle is not high performance in production environment so what are the constant parts in each every um, AI or ML life cycle Data is stored in the data source, so we need to retrieve the data, transform it and uh, do filtering and get rid of all noisy data which is not required for prediction or uh, any learning framework or any learning algorithms. Once we get the filtered data, we train it, we test it and we repeat this process until we get the convergence and like basically the min uh, minimum error rate. Once model model is ready, we put it in production and open it for uh, other data outside world data. So once we it go to production, we also have to uh, maintain it and update the version and monitoring it. So we will see each life cycle can how it can be uh, improved so that we can get the high performance and. Uh, better efficiency although there are many uh, projects under apache ecosystem for machine learning we will mostly focus in this talk on uh, apache ignite singa spark mxnet and mahal we will go each of the project one by one and check the initial research paper and cone concepts how they are implemented and then we understand various scenarios and use cases together also, we will see how, uh, how we can do better de deployment for all these project uh, frameworks. About me, my name is Shekhar Prasad Rajak. I am passionate about open source projects. Currently, I am working as a software engineer at Apple. I pursued my B.Tech in Computer Science and Engineering from National Institute of Technology, Warangal, India. I have also successfully completed Google Summer of Code project in 2016 under SymPy or which is Python library for symbolic mathematics and 2017 under Ruby Science Foundation who built the various scientific uh, scientific computing gem for Ruby I also mentor various students 2018-19 under various organization also I have uh, contributed more than 10 organization in a different way like uh, Ruby Bundler and NumPy SciPy for building the uh, main website and so on. You can easily find me in with this handle Shekhar Rajab or Shekhar Hyphen Rajab with in Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub. So let's back to the talk. So let's see uh, history behind each ML frameworks. So we start with Apache Singa, Singa or distributed deep learning platform. So Singa mostly focus on distributed computing. So how we can partition our data and run the training script in each of the machine parallelly so that the 
performance of overall uh, training stage uh, could be improved. So what are the challenges in um, machine learning uh, if we do distributed computing for uh, deep learning framework? So first challenge could be, um, so we have set up machines uh, running running the training uh, stage in parallelly. So in each iteration, we also need to update the model, uh, model parameters like weight or bias in each uh, iteration. So, so that means we have to sync up the model and make it up to date in every iteration. That means there is a huge communication over the system or set of machines that is running. Also, uh, we don't expect data scientists or machine learning to uh, understand the distribution computation or uh, set up the whole distributed system in their, uh, in their machine uh, for uh, various experiment and research. So Apache Singha provides simple API to solve these issues. So let's say in this example, we have four GPU machines running parallelly uh, training stage ranking them 0, 1, 2, and 3. So in each in each iteration, after each iteration, we get the loss function uh, gradient descent A, B, C, D. And once we get them, we uh, do all reduce operation using NCCL, also pronounced and can be pronounced as nickel, which is NVIDIA collective communication layer uh, library to do various operations like all reduce broadcast or uh, gather and so on so here all reduce operation will uh, take all the results a b c d and uh, get the average and distribute them uh, brought uh, distribute them all to each of the machines to make the model up to date in each iteration so this is the very fast way to uh, optimize optimized uh, communication over the GPU system set of machines. So Apache Singa uh, supports various deep learning feed forwarding models, uh, deep learning models like con uh, convolutional neural network, energy models like restricted Boltzmann machine, RNN, and natural uh, language processing. So main concept over each deep learning library or framework is computation graph. Uh, so we have forward pass and backward pass. So in each neural network, we have input layer, we have set up hidden layers and then output layer. So we can think them as a graph basically. So in that graph, we have leaf node as an input layer all the nodes in input layer and there is one node in our output layer which is the our prediction that means there is only one node that is a root node so when once we go from input layer to output uh, layer we go forward and calculate the loss function in each layer and the final loss function uh, we calculate we understand the prediction accuracy. Since if the error is not minimum, then we update the hyperparameters in our um, uh, model in each layer. Uh, the parameters could be number of node or num uh, weight or uh, bias. So for that, we need to do back propagate and update the parameters in each layer. So that means we need to calculate the gradient descent so forward pass is pretty straightforward we can calculate the loss function but for gradient descent we have to calculate the uh, uh, we have to do the some calculus operations like differentiation and that needs chain rule to be applied on each of the layer so if we uh, track whole fruit we can uh, calculate the uh, differentiation automatically after the forward pass so so that's why computer, computation graph is very necessary and each uh, deep learning framework. It has uh, optimized implementation of tensors and auto grade is 
all about like after forward pass automatically calculate the differentiation and get the gradient descent supported supports frameworks apache singa supports both synchronous and asynchronous training model uh, framework so when uh, we if we use synchronous uh, training framework that means in each iteration the workload is distributed across the system so so this give good efficiency but when there is a large cluster then this this is not uh, improved or uh, not give the better performance uh, so when but when we use the asynchronous training framework then uh, we get better convergence rate but also that uh, convergence rate is not uh, not improved when uh, models uh, number of replicas of the model is uh, increasing so apache singa comes with hybrid training framework also support hybrid training framework to balance out the efficiency and convergence rate communicator is uh, uh, implemented optimized way so that each uh, set of uh, machines can communicate very optimized way on the next format is supported by apache singa so if we have trained model through apache singa we can uh, use the uh, model uh, we can load the mod uh, we can save the model in on the next format and other deep learning framework can use it for inference and vice versa So let's go ahead with Apache MXNet. This is the initial research paper I found. Uh, flexible, efficient machine learning library for heterogeneous distributed systems. So main words are here: flexible, efficient, heterogeneous, distributed. So we'll go one by one. So Apache MXNet provides um, flexibility in programming languages to in. Front end, like we can code in C++, Java, Python, R, Julia, Scala, or JS, and in the back end side, it will run in optimized C++. Memory efficient, it sub also it supports the computation graph, uh, the same concept at Apache uh, Singa, the programming interface, both uh, declarative and imperative way. That makes it more uh, memory efficient because. If you want to do any imperative uh, program uh, like this NumPy code, uh, we calculate c equals to b um, multiplied by a. So this calculation is done uh, eagerly. So it just calculate it and uh, give the same data type, uh, data type and result uh, to c. And then C is in incremented by one, and it uh, it passes the value to D. But in declarative way, we first have to define the variable and bind the value to that variable, and it won't call calculate the uh, result. But first, it will calculate uh, uh, get the computation graph for it. So as we can see in this image and once it is compiled we can use the function for uh, uh, various a or b values so it also uh, uh, check the reference counter so here d c is uh, d is depend on c so c reference counter is one so if re reference counter is zero that means that variable life cycle is uh, completed also uh, apache in mxnet uh, various neural network uh, neur neural network or models can be used in various systems from mobile device to any cpu gpu or cloud uh, cloud providers and pre trained models apache mxnet comes with ver uh, very rich ecosystem uh, we have gluon interface for uh, if uh, so in Gluon interface, we see various implementation of uh, state-of-the-art deep learning uh, in computer vision, natural language processing, and time series uh, probabilistic time series modeling. So 
if we want any type of image classification or uh, uh, pose estimation or action uh, recognition in the image we can uh, do any uh, our researchers and students can easily uh, use the Gluon CV API it also have module 2 which have 170 plus high uh, quality uh, pretend model that can be used in the production level directly MX code and tensor RT are just to see how model MXNet is. So on top of it, we can easily build any app to any uh, library. So if we log our uh, execution part in uh, folder and uh, use the tensor board to visualize it, we can do it using the MX board and check all the how loss function is getting decrease and how all these stages are uh, completed and the computation that and so on tensor it is um, nvidia library for uh, optimized inference step so once train a model is trained uh, we put it in production that stage is called inference and if we want optimized uh, inference step or process we have to optimize our computation graph of the model so tensor rt first load the uh, model uh, pass the whole computation graph it get the all subgraphs that can be optimized by tensor rt if it can be optimized by tensor rt then it replace with its uh, tensor rt node so basically if there is any set of layers that can be combined and uh, can be calculated uh, through single CUDA uh, call then then it is a optimized way and yeah so th in this way we can optimize the inference step mxnet support various hardware as well so by now we have seen uh, why distributed computation is so helpful in uh, machine learning we will understand the other step as well like data processing with Apache Mohot. So Apache Mohot initially was a sub project of, of Apache Lucene and uh, then it became a good machine learning tool which works on top of Hadoop MapReduce for distributed scalable machine learning. Later on it became in independent and uh, only provide the uh, of distributed linear algebra operations and now it became backend agnostic that means it can run in Apache Spark or uh, S2O or Apache Flink so the here I am focusing on the distributed linear algebra uh, uh, operations using Apache Mohal so it gives the uh, very R like semantics for doing any matrix uh, operations in a distributed way so R works in a single node now uh, Apache Mohan can do with the same syntax in a distributed manner with Mohan Samsara so QR, SVD or PCA decomposition here is uh, some, some of the examples DRM is distributed row matrix that means if there is a very large uh, matrix we have that could be uh, distributed over the setup system and uh, operations will be in a distributed way in a optimized way so optimization is done under the hood like if you want to do it a, a a transpose uh, matrix multiply multiplication a then it will do some optimized algorithm like transport time self and we can visualize various things uh, graph in using Zeppelin So, on top of these uh, linear algebra operations, it have you know, some uh, methods implemented for data processing like one hot encoding or uh, getting the mean point of the data. One of the popular one is uh, recommendation system because in recommendation system we mostly uh, work on uh, various data matrics. So, Mahat also 
uh, have command line for Spark item similarity that will that means it will run on a Spark you know, backend side. So using this command, we can get the uh, indicator matrix log likelihood matrix and row similarity if we want to do recommendation uh, con content wise for a user so let's go ahead another data processing to spark we all know uh, spark is one of the mo most uh, popular open source project for uh, any data processing so it 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 uh, get the data from a data store and put it and try to cache them as much as possible so that in attitude jobs if we get chance to revisit the same data we don't go to db and uh, do read or write operation we directly uh, can do in memory speed here on top of spark uh, we have various packages for data processing like spark sql graphx streaming and it also has inbuilt powerful uh, cluster management system that can work in any cluster managers like kubernetes yarn mesos so this makes it very popular for machine learning as well and let's see what how cluster manager works in uh, spark stand uh, spark uh, application so we have once client submit the spark application it goes to spark master spark master talks to uh, spark worker node to run the spark driver for this application and uh, schedule the task that application want to run once driver schedule the uh, once spark scheduler uh, schedule the all the metadata about the task it wants to run and the memory or as, as cpu is wants to use to master master talks to worker node to start the executor for running those tasks parallelly and once they are started they directly communicate to a scheduler and give the update about the task that is running so in this way uh, it have very powerful execution system uh, using directed acyclic graph and cache strategy various uh, way of uh, storing uh, using the data rdd resilient data uh, distributed data set for any kind of failure we, we there is no loss of data and various api on top of it data frame data set it is faster than for the faster than hadoop map reduce and we all know how spark uh, uh, hadoop and spark uh, have s sorting challenge uh, hadoop did the shorting for petabyte of data in 22 minutes with 10x more resources and spark did the same thing in 23 minutes so spark 3.0 also come with up to uh, with uh, good new features like adaptive query execution so we all know uh, shuffle partitioning configuring shuffle partitioning uh, is an art and like we have to understand the data and uh, the stages that we want to run in runtime so now spark can um, go through the statistics for each stages and understand the data set and uh, select the optimized query plan for the next uh, iteration. So also have various implementation of machine learning algorithms and uh, machine learning pipeline transformer and estimator. So we go step by uh, we update the each stages in our pipeline and can run them. Okay, I will go through this slide later on. Apache Ignite which is horizontally scalable distributed in memory computing platform that means it it wants to do lesser and um, it wants to do basically zero etl um, very avoid the data transmission over the network uh, over the system so it's a, it avoids the data grid uh, for uh, it's a, it have data grid implemented under the hood so when we see data grid that means it have very high performant uh, cache here so we, if we go to history of this cache we know about lru so we only store the high uh, most frequent used uh, data 
to avoid single point of failure we can replicate the same uh, lr you can say but but doing the replication is not a solution so we go through the next plan uh, next optimized way data partition so each node have one primary data and this uh, backup data and now the more optimized way is using affinity key and uh, using the data grid so but if persistence is off it, it works as a um, in memory data grid if per persistence is on it works as an in memory database so the two main concept in apache ignite is compute grid and the service grid so in compute grid we understand that each in uh, doing the computation uh, independent uh, task can be divided into set uh, each ignite uh, cluster nodes so here c1 c2 c3 uh, we are doing the computation and getting the result r1 r2 at 3 so it works like a map reduced fashion so like if you want to calculate the uh, uh, mm, mm, uh, count the prime numbers in our uh, list of uh, in integer list then we can divide our data in, into our ignite cluster and uh, get the prime number count and once we get the result each for each node we sum sum them up and get the final result so it, that works in a parallel way in service grid we have user defined services so it can so we can deploy the service in a two ways you know node singleton or cluster singleton node singleton as saying uh, each a, the service is deployed on each of the node and cluster mode that means um, in one cluster there will be one uh, ser service is deployed in one of the node so so uh, it also have if one of the node goes down uh, we don't have to restart the whole cluster we just have to uh, it started a new node and uh, work smoothly so we can have deep learning framework or machine learning algorithm as a service here and running in each of the nodes parallelly so let's see one scenario here we have to ignite cluster node and each have two tables like one is country and one is city so one of the node is storing the uh, data uh, with where country code is india and other node is storing data where country goes it us so if one if we have new record to be inserted in city table and where country code is uh, india for that city that should go into our node one here and if there is any city which has country code us then uh, it should go into node 2 so that we can do the uh, any kind of uh, group by or join operation inside the node itself so that will avoid the uh, that will reduce the uh, network latency so we can use the affinity key here uh, uh, as a country code for our city table so it makes sure that uh, the city related to the country goes to the uh, respect and the same uh, node in this way we uh, try to avoid the data transmission over the network and any group and join, join operations uh, kind of operations are now faster so we see partition bit data set affinity key and uh, there are different ways of uh, policy if there is failover so it makes sure there is no failover and uh, uh, the overall time will uh, will be same if as there is no uh, node failure. It also have various load balancing policies, so make sure that there is uh, a load balance across the node. So till now we have seen uh, various distributed uh, computation in uh, 
using this uh, deep learning frameworks and then we see uh, distributed linear algebra operation can how distributed linear algebra operation can be done using apache mohot and then various uh, different uh, dis, uh, various packages over spark for data processing and then we understand how we can accelerate the storage system as well by making them in memory and uh, uh, try to avoid uh, data transmission over the system for any data processing so in so we if we want to build them together and pro get the powerful powerful uh, machine learning system uh, we can use Apache Ignite as a cache or DB and then on top of it uh, use the Spark Core Engine for any kind of data processing. So uh, Spark uh, supports and can be configured to use the Apache Ignite uh, data storage and once data is retrieved from the data source, uh, it Apache Ignite uh, cluster provides the shared RDD uh, to each of the Spark uh, workers and can be accessible in memory speed. So no data movement here, we can do distributed SQL or any RDD operations over the uh, Ignite cluster uh, that Ignite provides. So also, uh, see we can uh, have uh, different data sources and uh, if we can uh, run them in Spark, that means we can deploy it in various cluster man uh, management tools or uh, container orchestration tools like Kubernetes, YARN and Mesos. So YARN mostly work as a resource manager and Mesos can work for container and non-containerized application both. So if we are distributed learning frameworks then we should have a cluster manager, our uh, one resource manager to use the resources efficiently, cluster manager to make sure there is uh, if there is any failure, it restart the worker node. So this means um, if we have a Spark standalone uh, cluster manager that can provide all these features. If we want to use uh, MXNet as our deep learning framework, then if we have a trained model from MXNet, we load our data in a Spark application and do the inference using PySpark and MXNet and then this whole inference step can be done uh, in a better performance in parallel. So if we see the prototype version works pretty well in the small environment but it should work in a broad environment as well. So that means it should isolate it from the environment that means we have to containerize it just to recap what is docker container a process running on host machine that means a docker container if you run the docker container we can see the each of the container running in a host machine using the ps command or something it each container have own network and file system just fast and quick unlike vm we can't boot as a different os uh, but they are all isolated uh, so running in each uh, host machine that means uh, what makes it isolated so if we create a file system for one container it create a layer on top of it and make sure it is isolated from other containers so when we talk about containers we talk about kubernetes for managing them so various features in Kub uh, kubernetes like uh, service uh, we run the container or uh, kubernetes pod and uh, to get the replica of the instance we use replica container or replica set and once we get the replica we uh, make it uh, discoverable to outside the cluster and we can have very configuration uh, kubernetes object like config max uh, secrets and also various low role based uh, access control over it it is easy to roll out new version and um, monitor it as well so it helps in automatic deployment and dynamic scaling as per the demand and managing them it helps e every 
developer system admin operation operation can be easily monitor and, and get the set up the alert management or logging system system admin can easily uh, configure the various uh, infrastructure over it and developers can quickly start the kubernetes cluster and, and do the experiments over it when we see kubernetes for ai or ml then uh, it seems a little difficult because you have to containerize everything but uh, you don't have to containerize everything because most of the things are already present in helm chart and we can use the operators uh, and do our configuration on top of it so when we say spark on kubernetes operator that means we just say operator to i need spark cluster and creates the cluster for you with the, your given configuration and similarly for mxnet so also various cloud providers giving the uh, I've already installed uh, uh, on on any instance there so we need uh, we want also optimization should be same as our uh, prototype version and it should be portable scalable and uh, we can we should easily reuse the each, uh, stages in machine learning life cycle and we should is we should be able to easily experiment so qflow provide the uniform platform it is a toolkit for kubernetes to run the machine learning in, uh, in a simplified way so etl train test uh, tune the parameters and update inference monitor maintain these are this uh, stages in which is same for each machine learning uh, system so we should have a uh, complete pipeline uh, that means set of steps order and we can we should have a ui to visualize to understand each how is each step is going on so we can do the hyperparameter tuning using creative uh, that means if we if we do it manually we have to run it again and again understand the uh, put uh, uh, parameter value for it it also provides various data scientist uh, tools like Jupyter Notebook and can scale dynamically as per the demand. So here one example, if we want to do data processing and then decomposition step, then the training step and so on. We did the data processing in Python and some other uh, framework and then we did the, uh, we use the uh, Mahat Samsara for uh, uh, doing the decomposition or uh, like uh, reducing the uh, resolution like data uh, dimensionality reduction on each of the images uh, basically filtering out all the noisy data and get, uh, only using the uh, pixel that is required for the prediction and running on top of spark so that are all con containerized each step is containerized here and then training step and so on so my main motive is here to so that each step is containerized and running in different languages or frameworks and using kubeflow we have a pipeline here we compile it and we create the experiment and run the pipeline so we can do the experiment over each uh, steps and so on so once everything is fine, you can enjoy this moment and monitor your uh, or experiment the whole your machine learning life cycle. There are other cluster managers as well, say like Yarn, Mesos, that works pretty fine. But uh, I think Qflow is solving most of the challenges currently. I, I will also be talking about cluster management in Apache ecosystem and Kubernetes in my next talk, which is after two hours from now. And I hope you will join me there as well. I so I we go through each research papers and I also read various book on top on uh, for these technologies and official side are very we uh, have very very good blog posts and articles over it so thank you everyone for joining me in this talk I hope you learned a lot of things here so you can find me easily in any of uh, with this under Sekar Rajak Sekar Rajak Rajak my GitHub URL uh, the personal website is hosted in secretary.github.io you can also also check out the various position on uh, in apple in apple booth if you have any question feel free to text
I'm also available in uh, machine learning big data track in Slack channel of Pachicon and also in uh, Apple Boot. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you, Apache Pond. Thank you, Apple and other companies for uh, sponsoring this uh, awesome conference.